Neighbor, whether you like it or not, you will celebrate me. This is no longer November. This is December. Whether you believe it or not, I will be celebrated and you are compulsory invited in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And somebody shout it louder. Amen. Put your hands together. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is good. No, until I leave, you do my own stuff. And his mercies endure forever. When I leave, you keep quiet. But when I say the Lord is good, what would you respond? I didn't condemn your stuff, but I just love this one. Because I saw it more in the Bible. The Lord is good. Some people are not saying it. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Somebody shout, yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. Heaven and I adore thee. You are the mighty God. Heaven and I worship you. You are the mighty God. Now, if you don't attend the festival of life, you are not permitted to sing. And if you want to sing at all, you pay your $10 fine to the pastor in the house. Hallelujah. Those who attend, they already know they can sing. Come on. Everybody put your hands together. You are the mighty God. Yeah. You are the mighty God. Heaven and earth adore thee. You are the mighty God. Heaven and I worship you. You are, you are, you are, you are. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. And I adore you. You are the mighty God. And I worship you. You are the mighty God. Amen. Amen. Younger than a lot of the choir members, so they want to do it my own way. I'm younger than most of them, so you know that already. All right, so we they we take it the young chap style. You are the mighty girl, hey, hey, hey. you are the mighty girl. Ah, heaven and earth adore thee. You are the mighty girl. Hey. Heaven and I worship you. You are the mighty. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. Uh -huh. Come on. You are the mighty God. Heaven and I adore me. You are the mighty God. Somebody give me praise. Heaven and I worship you. You are the mighty God. Listen, everybody. You are the mighty God. Give him praise. You are the mighty God. Yeah. Heaven and earth adore thee. You are the mighty God. Heaven and I worship you. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are the mighty God. Give him praise. Somebody give him praise. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. Heaven and I worship you. You are the mighty God. Listen to me. I think you remember this is no longer January. I think you know that God is so mighty that February is gone. March is gone. April is gone. May is gone. June is gone. July that looks like he wants to bury you is over. August is past. September that looks so difficult is gone. October is over. November is gone. This mighty God is worthy of praise. Heaven and I worship you. You are 
are, you are, you are, you are, you are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. Yeah. You are the mighty God. Ah, heaven and earth are me. You are the mighty God. Heaven and earth worship you. You are the mighty God. 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 Oh, heaven and You are the mighty God. Heaven and earth worship you. You are the mighty God. Listen. Let us now tell him. As heaven and earth adore thee, even my own life too, worship you. I will sing. You are the mighty God. Hey, hey. You are the mighty God. Ah. Heaven and earth adore thee. You are the mighty God. Ah. Even my life worship you. You are, you are, you are, you are. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. Oh. Heaven and earth, I love thee. You are the mighty God. Even my life, even my life, worship you. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are the mighty God. Oh, you are the mighty God. Heaven and earth, I love thee. You are the mighty God. Worship and worship. Let your soul lift him up and sing to him. Give him praise. Give him praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Somebody lift him up and worship and worship. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. We we'll lift you up. We worship. We give you praise. We worship. We worship. Give him praise for another opportunity. Give him praise for another month. Give him praise for another chance. Give him praise because another better future ahead of you. Give him praise because he gave you another chance. Give him praise because this is a month of December. The enemy thought you would not witness it. Here you are in the presence of God. Give him praise because he's worthy. Give him praise because he's spared your lives. Give him praise because he's there for you in the day and the night. Remember narrow escape of death. Remember that accident that you not only escape, give him praise and give him glory. Worship him. Let's bless his name. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we worship. Let me hear somebody shout a loud amen. amen. Look straight to somebody and say, you don't understand. I wish you understand. <laughs> Listen to me, everyone. Only in the U.S., only in the U.S., over 6,000 people die daily. Only in the U.S. And here you are. Another chance. 
another opportunity, another day, the faithful God has done it one more time. I wish you understand. I wish you understand that it's not by strength, not by your education, not by your wisdom. I wish you understand. Hallelujah. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor. I wish you understand. Say it one more time, neighbor. I wish you understand. I wish you understand. Say it one more time, neighbor. I wish you understand. You will have joined me to worship God. Somebody shout a louder amen. I wish you understand that every year, 55 million, 503,922 people died every year. I wish you know that in the past 11 months, you have crossed over. That over 55 million people had died all over the world. Look straight to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I wish you understand that every month, all over the world, 4,625,327 people die every month, including November. I wish you understand that God has been faithful to me. Lift up your voice and give him praise one more time. I wish you understand. I wish you understand that today we shouldn't have any preaching than to begin to thank the God of heaven. I wish you understand that God has given you another chance. I wish you understand. I wish you understand that Every day, every day, every day, including today, and this is a statistics of 2008, that 151,000 people, 650 died daily. Every day. 151,650 people died daily all over the world i wish you understand that it is not by chance i am giving just another opportunity i wish you understand that is god has so been merciful to me and spared my life i wish you understand that it's not by power it is not by might it's by my spirit says the lord i wish you understand that every hour 6,000 people die every hour I wish you understand that every minute every minute every minute including the minute we are going to spend here now one minute 105 people died in one one minute I wish you understand that I made it again to the month of December I wish you understand we need to give glory to God Give him praise. Wave your hands. Give God a praise. Somebody shout, Hallelujah! Father, we thank you. Father, we give you all the worship. We give you all the glory and all the praises. For thou art worthy. No wonder. Even my life worship you. You are the mighty God. Somebody lift him up. He's worthy. We give you praise. We give you worship. Thank you, Father, for another chance. You're giving us a parable that I'm not true with you yet. Circumstances may be so tense. It may seem as if there's no hope for tomorrow. But I spared your life because I am not true yet with you. I am still having a future for your life. 
We'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And somebody shout a Goliath killing amen. That's not sounding or shout a Goliath killing amen. Look straight to somebody and say, I made it. By his grace alone. Shout yes. Let's be seated. Amen. Amen. I just want to remind you that if God gives you another day Amen. and you open your eyes with hundreds of millions of debts and hundreds of thousands of court cases, including deportation orders and all the confusions and the lack and the sorrow, and the depravity, and the calamity, and depression. And you still open your eyes and say, James, you say, eh? The first thing to do is never to remember the calamities, the depressions. The first thing to do is to say, God, you gave me another chance. You are not true yet with me. The enemy may have announced that it's over. But for you to have kept me awake again to witness this moment, it's a parable that you are not true yet with me. My husband may say it's over. Go. I don't want you anymore. But for you to keep me to see this day, you are saying it's not yet over. My topic this morning is the power of negative words. I want to believe that December will be good for me. I want to believe that every one of you will celebrate me in December. No, 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 you don't have to repeat me. Excuse me. This is all for me. Eh? Man, you're not getting me right. Come on now. I want to believe that it shall be a moment that CNN will take my story this month for good. I want to believe that whether I invite you or not, in the month of December, you'll be forced to come and celebrate me. I want to believe that God is about to do things that will amaze you concerning my life this month. Somebody shout yes if you're in agreement. If God has given you another chance, it is a parable that is not yet over. Because when God finishes with you, he will kill you. If God finishes with you, he will kill you. But because you are still here, God is saying, regardless of the battles, it's not over yet. Oh, I want a smile on somebody and look at someone and say, say it's not over yet. The power of negative words. Men and brethren, most of the ruins most of the calamities, most of the sorrows, most of the lack, most of the confusions, most of the problems you find yourselves in were as a result of negative words. Because we are created to become creators. Did you hear me well? You have the same ability that God had in him. He gave you. And so when you start declaring you are a failure, nobody will help you. Even God will not. I'll show you in the scripture. If you are the type that start believing, I am succeeding. Regardless of your battle. And you sing it to yourself. You proclaim inside of you. And you declare to circumstances around, regardless of how much situation looks like, you will succeed. I'm not praying for you. I'm telling you reality. Some of us have been damaged because you damage yourself with your words. In this day, listen to this. A wise person has said, watch your thoughts because they will soon become your words. Watch your words because they will soon become your actions. 
Watch your actions because they will soon become your habits. And watch your habits because they will soon become your characters. And watch your characters because they will soon become your destiny. It is whatever you have declared yourself to be that you will be. And I'm telling somebody in the house today, all negative words you have ever spoken and thought that has ever run through you will be deleted this morning. Yeah. I like your religious amen. Yeah. I will not take it, but I like your religious amen. Yeah. There are some amen in the kingdom that doesn't mean anything. It comes naturally. Somebody, if I'm talking to you, shout a Goliath killing amen! Your pastor in Festival of Life said something, and I want to remind you. My inner world created my outer world. He said it in a different way. The spiritual controls the physical. That's what he said. But my inner world creates my outside world. If your mouth and your thought is saying you will fail, I met a woman some years ago. Everything in her thoughts and in her mouth is that this marriage will not work. My husband is sleeping around. My husband will fail. My husband is not a success. He is not concentrating. He is not going to make this marriage. This marriage is a horrible thing. Are you just looking at me like this? This marriage will not work. And as I'm telling you, they divorce. The marriage didn't work. Because that is what her pronouncement has been. The power of negative words. Open your Bibles with me. There's a popular passage I have preached before in this church. And a lot of ministers have preached. But I want to show you the background of those passages today. That is Ezekiel 37. You know the story? If you're a good religious person, you know it. What is in uh, Ezekiel 37? Speak now. Is it because I say religious people? Okay, so if you know what is in Ezekiel, lift up your hand and shout out louder. Amen. Amen. In the book of Ezekiel, there's a story about God Almighty requesting one of his prophets to stand up and go to the Valley of Bones. You remember that? Answer, I'm not in London. Answer. Answer me. Answer, answer. Turn, turn around to somebody and say, answer, answer, answer. This is what I tell them in London, that they don't answer. They, they won't, they'll just be looking at you. How can I be at home here in the U.S. and you're still looking at me? Turn around to somebody, you better shout. Preaching should be participating. It should not be something that the preacher is preaching and you are dozing. Some of us will be counting money right there on the table. How much is my bill? Right there inside church. You are not available. You look like you are here, but you are gone. Turn around to somebody and say, I'm right here, right here. If you are not here, shout hallelujah! I told them. I don't know what to do with you. You are not here. Can you tell somebody, neighbor, neighbor. come on here. here. Shout yes. yes. Ezekiel 37 is a story where God has to call a prophet and say, go now and prophesy to these bones. Have you ever asked a question, what is going on there? It's very simple. Could you believe God told Ezekiel the meaning of what he asked him to do? He told him that these people were not bones. I did not make them bones. They were not supposed to be dry bones. They were house of Israel. They were human beings. They were supposed to be successful. But they say. Now go back to Ezekiel now. Since you know the story. 37. Are we there? Which one is yes? Where? What verse? No, that's not where I'm going. Ezekiel 37. Is anybody there? 
Are you there? Are you sure? From verse 11. From verse number 11. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones were the house of Israel. Look up and listen. These bones that you are seeing, they were not bones. They were the house of Israel. Sir, how do they become dry bones? And God explained. Look at the next verse. Then, I read, the, I read again verse 11. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, everybody say, they say. Listen to them. They did what again? They say. I did not say. They say. I wasn't the one who told them they must be dry bones. They made themselves dry bones. I couldn't help them because they say they were dry bones. And the only way I can help them is to find another person to say something positive to their negative confession. Oh, you don't understand. And therefore, I have to look for a prophet to correct what they say. They say, and what do they say? Read along with me. They say, our bones are very dry. Our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Who say, God says, who told Elijah that he will die? God, he said it. Who told him he has failed, that his fathers were better than him? Bewitchment in his mind and in his heart. And he started confessing what the bewitchment says. Let me tell you something about confessions with your mouth. Confessions with your mouth gets you involved. Get you what? Involved. You unconsciously get involved with what the devil wants to say or want to do when you confess or think something negative. You get involved. You get yourself committed to the ruin, to the calamity, to the sorrow, to the lack, to the, every part of evil that the enemy had programmed to accomplish in your life when you start confessing and thinking negative things. You get involved. That is why God says without faith, I won't answer you. Why? You are not involved with me. You get involved with something else that is negative. So it's a matter of involvement. It's a matter of what? They say, I am standing this day from January to now. Every evil thing you have spoken that has affected you shall be deleted. I want to challenge somebody in the house from this month of December. Your story will change. Your thoughts must change. Your pronouncement must change. Look at that child and say, child, you are rising up. You are shining. You are a success. You are making your exam. You are getting there. You look so weak, but you are stronger inside. They say, they say the power of negative words. When you say it, you will have it. And God was explaining to Ezekiel, do you know the reason why they become dry bone? Do you know the reason why they become bones and in the valley? is because they say. And as they said it, they became exactly what they said. So therefore, I need a prophet to go now to the valley of the dry bones of Israelites and pronounce. I'm here in the house of somebody here today who had ruined your marriages because of negative words. I'm here to help somebody in the house who the enemy has destroyed your plans, your future, your finances, your life because of words that are negative. I'm here sent by God to prophesy in agreement with somebody in the house that we are rising above these challenges. We are rising above these circumstances. We are rising about the financial predicament. We are rising about the joblessness. We are rising above. 
the kingdoms that he says we will fail. That's the assignment I have this morning. They say. They what? God told his prophet. You know what? I didn't say it. They say that we are dry bones. And God was explaining to the prophet, they were Israelites, they were human beings. They were supposed to be successful. But they say, and what they say is what they reap. The power of negative words. Nobody can help you above negative words. No preacher will assist you. God will not. Because that's what you say. Look at, if the whole house of Israel says that they were dry bones, and they became dry bones. It takes God. It took God himself to go and look for another prophet. Go now and start prophesying. What they said is killing them. What they said is ruining them. Go now and start to prophesy. So that you will change what they say. I'm here today to change what you have been saying about yourself. Somebody believe me. By the grace of God today, you will rise above your predicament. You will rise above your marital problem. You will rise above those health problems. You will rise and shine. This month of this, somebody shall yes. Your inner world creates your outside world. It's left for you. I want somebody from the second, is it second or third or fourth today? What's today's date? From the second day to delete and erase all that you have spoken from January and begin to speak something positive. The captivation of darkness is to keep you in evil thoughts and negative pronouncement. You look at your marriage and say, this cannot work. This man will sleep around and he will be sleeping around. This man will divorce me and he will divorce you. But when you look at the man and say, man, you are making it. No, the enemy is lying over you. No, you are not going to sleep around. You are a powerful husband. You are succeeding. You will make it. This marriage will work. I tell you, the enemy will run away from your family. Turn around to somebody and say, we are making it together. Say, we are making it together. We cannot fail. It is not possible to fail. I was in the church preaching. A Togolese woman was in the church with deportation order. And that woman was in big, big, big mess. The husband couldn't walk. Has to run away and escape to New York. And then the children scattered. One of them in the church with us, another one in a Togolese church. All of them, mess of things were just too terrible. The woman came to one of my program and I said, I wasn't talking directly to anybody. I said, your issue of immigration is sorted out. You are receiving a miracle. The woman jumped up and came to the front and said, I receive it. It shall be so. And from that moment, she started confessing. I got it already. The paper is coming. The man of God has spoken. It shall be mine. It will happen soon. The miracle is mine. And she became so crazy that the children look around and say, what are you saying? She said, you don't understand. I wish you understand. The mouth of God has spoken it. It is happening to me. Before I traveled to London, just about three weeks ago, the woman came and said, Pastor, Pastor, everybody were crying. I said, what happened? Tell me. Ah, no. And she doesn't speak too much English. She's, we burst out to some English and some French and some crying. I said, God help me. I need to understand many tongues. Then she said, Pastor, I'm just coming to your house, to your house. To your house. I said, Ah, God help me. What is going on? Father, let nobody die. In Jesus, God says, Shut up. Nobody dies. It's a testimony. So when the woman came, he said, Where's mommy? I said, Mommy is okay. okay. Mommy should come down. Mommy, come down. Come down. Come down. Everybody came down. He said, Hey, hey, Papa. Hmm. But I, don't, I don't know what to say. I said, Ah, we've read. That's the song. Tell me what is going on with Mama. He said, No, Mama will talk with her mouth. <laughs> My whole house was turned into another thing. She would speak small French. She would speak her language. She would, I said, uh -huh. After a while, I saw her crying. 
Then she now said, Pastor, from the moment you pronounced that heaven has taken care of immigration issue, I repeatedly say it every night, every minute, when I'm walking, when I'm going anywhere, Pastor, they send us a letter to come for fingerprints next week. I don't know how it happens. They said, we must come before certain days. In the less than one week, I'm calling my husband to come now. We are all going, Pastor, I said what you say. Men and brethren, you have ruined your destinies with the power of negative thoughts and negative words. Who told you it will not happen? Elijah said, I am no better than my father's. I have to die. There's no need for me to leave. Who told him? Bewitchment succeeded over his thoughts. He came out of his mouth. And may I tell you, if God don't step in immediately, that's exactly what will happen to him. You will have exactly what you say. The power of negative words. People have told you so much about the power of positive words. But you need to understand that the ruin that we are facing today, the challenges that we are facing today, the calamities that we are facing today is a result of negative pronouncements. Look at that child and say, child, you are succeeding. There was a, fa a pastor who to spoke to me about the son, the very firstborn. That boy became wayward. Was sent to school. Pastor's firstborn. Was sent to school. From the school, started smoking weed. Went into drug. Terrible, terrible, terrible things. Going with all these robbers, all these criminals, notorious cases. He became so... That was the boy who started playing keyboard in the church before he went to college. And the father came and said, Pastor, we are in bad shape. It is horrible. Our family is in disarray. Pastor, my son, firstborn. I told that man, I said, what? He said, Pastor. He said, Pastor, you don't understand. I said, he's a preacher. He said, you don't understand. I said, he's a man of God. He said, you don't understand. I said, he's anointed. Uh -uh. The man was looking at me and said, what are you talking about? I said, that is exactly what I see. You see a wrong thing. Can you begin to see and say what I'm saying? I told you what happened this year, this year, the beginning of this year. We started saying it. No, he just went an holiday. He's coming back. He's a preacher. He will be a success. He will preach Christ. He will walk in Christ. This boy is not useless. He's not into drug. He's just... We keep saying that we end... I call for prayer. We held our hands together and we start declaring the same thing and saying it to the glory of God today. The boy is out of drug and ready to come back to church and start playing the keyboard. What you say is what you will have. The power of what? Negative words. Men and brethren, this December is different. I'll give... I like your religious amen. Yeah. Now, men and brethren, I'm closing from here. If unbelievers can be so positive in their declaration and they are succeeding, what is wrong with you? I live in Atlanta. I can tell you about Atlanta. Coca-Cola World Headquarters is in Atlanta. Am I right? You know that. Thank God I came from there. Maybe the next time you visit, I'll take you down because everywhere you go inside the Coca-Cola, you take free drink of all their product until your belly is bursting, free of charge. Look up. How did this story happen? It was a pharmacist who came to the backyard of his house one day Dr. John, first name. He went to the backyard of his house with three-legged kettle, small kettle, and put these things together and shook it and tasted it in Atlanta and drank it. He brought the glass out to his friends and said, have a taste of my new invention. 
I just came up with this idea. The friends tasted it and said, ah, where do you get this secret from? He said, I won't tell you. And then, he said, they said, when you are coming to office tomorrow, he's a pharmacist. When you are coming to office tomorrow, can you do more of this? He said, yes. Bring it. He brought it to the office. People drank. Ah, where do you get this secret? He said, don't worry. I'm having, my daughter is having birthday in the next two weeks. Can you produce more? Say, uh-uh, I will. I can. The man started. Listen to me. The first year of Coca-Cola, 1886. 1886. The first year, the man invested $75 as the whole capital for the year. Are you hearing me? Uh, because as at that time, a glass of it was five cents. Are you hearing me? Are you listening to me? This is somebody who was a pharmacist. A glass was five cents. So if you buy many, five cents, 50 cents, before, by the time, before you said 50 cents, you have spent so much money. So the man invested $75 on the capital of that project in 1886. Listen to me very well. And when they were now trying to see, what do you call it? Uh, at the end of the year, they want to see the profit and uh, what do you call it? Whatever. <laughs> when they were trying to put the account together and see the sales for the year, the profit and the losses, they came up, whatever, sir. They came out with an idea that, okay, how much do we make? What's our profit for this year? The whole sales for the year was $50. How much did they invest? Huh? How much losses? Are you sure? Should they continue? Believers will think it's over. Christian will say we can't do it. It's a failure. This is no success. The man said, no, we are going ahead. The very first year of Coca-Cola, they failed. Even though the man died in 1888, two years after the invention. And look at Coca-Cola today. He believed we can make it and they succeeded. For your own case, you always say, I can't do it. We can't get it. It cannot be there. And what you say is what you become. Every power that has spoken negative things to your fountain, to your businesses, to your marriages, to your health, that is already keeping you in bondage, Holy Ghost will delete them tonight. Somebody shout a louder, amen. amen. A boy was sick at the age of 12. And as a result of the sickness, I know a medical doctor will have better title to it, became deformed, paralyzed, like vegetable, couldn't talk, the hand can't move, the legs can't move, can't move anything anymore. There is no crusade or revival they don't take that boy to. The parent, as a result, became born again. Started going from one convention to another convention. One program to another program. One day, they go to everywhere, no healing. Every other person will be here, healed, no healing. One day, the boy beckoned to the mother and used his hand, it took almost three hours to write. Put me in my room. Don't take me out anymore. Enlarge my picture in my room. Period. And they enlarged her 12 years old birthday picture in her room, in his room. And they say, okay, since this is what he wants, don't take me out. All right. So every day, the boy cannot open his mouth, cannot read Bible, cannot do anything. But every day he will be looking at that picture, saying, God, if indeed you are God, this is who I am. And that is who I must become. 
they have taken me to the greatest preachers and I am not changed. But I see this picture. This is who I was. This is who you made me to be. And on daily basis, the boy will focus attention and the mother and the father will come into the room and weep and go away and the boy don't understand why are they weeping. They don't understand. I'm only reminding God. They say, no, the picture is there so that he can be weeping. He can see himself. Maybe he will kill himself. They don't understand. The boy will focus on the picture and say, God, I just, this is not the way I was. You created me, my legs. I was standing on my feet here. This is me. This is what I want to be. This is what I will become. On regular basis in his thought. He was running that thought in his mind every day. One day, ta, the legs shoot out in the room. The hands stretched. And he said, I can stand. Then he stood up. Then he went to that picture and kissed the picture. And said, now I know that is the God in heaven who does wonders. He refused to go out. He was still moving around inside the room. He was moving around and praising God. Then the parents, mother, you know, who come and carry poo poo and bring food, open door and sit there and run away. And the son says, Mom, come on here. The God you have taken me to that you don't understand came into this room with my, from the day when I asked you to lock me in here, my thought was running that I will become this. I will become this. This is who I am. I don't know what is going with my body now, but this picture I see, I am standing here, and I will still stand. I will still succeed. I will still make it. That is what you are seeing, mama. I tell somebody in the house today, change your thoughts, your life will change. Change your ideas, your life will change. Change your confession. Who, who, who told you you will die? Who told you you can't succeed? Who told you you are a failure? You. I read this to you. Ovely, right. And Wilborn, right. They are called the Wright brothers. Ovely, right. And Wilborn, right. They are called what? The right brothers. After everyone has struggled on different effort on to fly in the sky. Many, many, many efforts. Balloon fly, everything. Every, every time human being sees board flying, the idea has always come. When are we going to fly? Several people had come up with different ideas that doesn't work. But this family I mentioned, Orville, right. Wilbur, right. Both of them are called the Wright brothers. But let me tell you what will shock you about one of them. This particular day, they start working on how an aeroplane will fly. We will do it. Everything was working against them. They say no. They use. They requested for the best automobile company to help them build something that can make a plane fly. They said, <laughs> "You are just talking. Have you ever seen it before? Have you ever seen anything like that happen?" Listen to this quote. This is from Orville Wright. Flight is possible to man. And I feel that it will take, it will soon cost me an incredible amount of my money and even my life. But flight is possible. The rest is story today. One man believed it is possible and started saying it. And here we are today with Boeing 777 in the sky, zooming. I flew from Atlanta to Japan. 
I respect what human thoughts and idea can do. 23 hours of non-stop. I say, God Almighty. We were so calm in the air. Everything was easy. Thank God I had the opportunity to be in the first class. We relaxed and slept over. The next thing we hear, ooh, ooh, and the thing was zooming. And we were going, and everything was so balanced. And I look around and say, God Almighty, where are we now? We're not yet in heaven. We're not in the ground. And then the plane was zooming. And by the time we landed, I give more glory to God for creating human beings to become creators. Men and brethren, you can kill and damage yourself by your thoughts, by your pronouncements. The reason why we are not succeeding is because you believe you cannot succeed. Believing why you are not making it is because you declare you cannot make it. They say, who said it? The Israelites. And what did they become? What they said. Can't God help them? No. They say. Have you read that in your Bible? What do they say? Read what they said. They say, our bones are dry. What do they become? Answer me now. It's God who did it. And our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. They say, and they became. Finally, we read this and then we close. I'm here to tell you today that you will, with your mouth and with the help of the unction of God on this altar, we will delete, destroy, annihilate every negative things you have pronounced. If God can do, do it for Israelites and told Ezekiel, go and tell them it's possible. Go and tell them they will rise. Go and tell them I will open their graves. They are not going to die. They are not bones. What they say, they say, and they became exactly what they said. Let's read this portion of scripture in closing. Men and brethren, you are the one nobody else can help you. It will shock you that we have been made creators. If human beings can come up with the idea, the right brothers, let me tell you what will shock you. On the very day of experiment, the one who did the first flight, they invited all the TV stations to come and carry it. No one shows up because they believe they can't do it. No one shows up. They did it anyhow. Do you know what happened the first day of experiment? The first airline, the airplane they created flew for only about 60 seconds and fell down. And they were praising God. We did it. We will still do it. We will do it. Plane, it is possible. Flight is possible. That's what these people start saying. Is it possible today? Look up, church. Let me tell you this. Everything you see on earth today were created by human beings. You don't understand. Including your hair tie, your gold, your shoes. Your teeth, the artificial teeth. <laughs> Everything you see today, here, your suit, the iPad. I have no time to tell you the story of cell phone or the story or history behind money. So foolish enough as believers, we always believe we can't do it because there's no money. You don't need money. Money needs you. Not at all. How much did Mark in Harvard University had when he started? Nothing. Money ran after him. Everybody is on Facebook, including the government of America. Because of a boy, 19 years old, who had an idea, who had no money. Money came later. Money is not the issue. It's you. Everything to succeed is in you. Begin to bring them out. You will succeed. But when you begin to damage them, they will die. You look at yourself and say, I can't do it. 
We're reading this story now, and I'll tell you something. Listen. Nine years ago, God gave me an idea. And I said, but I'm a pastor, you know. God said, I told you the last phase of your ministry is the blessing. I have fulfilled all part of your ministry, but the last phase of your ministry is the blessing. Go and read your calling. Did I not mention that I will bless you like I bless Abraham? I said, yes, sir. He said, it is the last phase and it is time for me to execute what I said. But Lord, you said it 31 years ago. He said, time is not my business. I control time. Time don't control me. I stay outside time and control time. I live in eternity. And God said, you're so therefore that you are old that the day is past. It's none of my business. I am going to rewind all things the way I want to do it. At my set time. You said, that idea I gave you nine years ago, shake it. Polish it. Write it. Search for it. Do it. I said, but nine years ago, I have joked about it. I have told everybody about it. I have sang about it. People will have done it. God said, shut up. I control time, I told you. And because I gave you the idea, I control it since nine years ago for you. Look straight to somebody and say, I can do it. I think you don't remember that the right brothers are human beings with two heads. I think you don't remember with that the doctor, Dr. John, who started Coca-Cola, is a man. Actually, he died two years later. 1888, he died. But Coca-Cola didn't die. You will be successful. Yeah. Oh, I said this month of December. I'm not talking about next year. I said December, you will shine. You will rise. You will shine. You will rise. You will shine. You will rise. God says, son, it's time for you to visit what I said. And I wrote everything down. I call all the colleagues I know. Make a research for me from the USPTO. They did. They said nobody did it. I said, I won't believe that. I call a whole company who are dedicated to such invention thing. Go and make a research for me at the US patent office and see whether when they finish the research, they say, sir, it's empty. Nobody has done it. By the way, how do you get this idea? I said, no, that's none of this. We'll discuss that later. Can you see if it is patentable? They say, yes, sir. They say, can you forward more information? I forwarded the information. Listen, a Nigerian come from Africa. I forwarded the information. I put everything forward. But something inside of me says you will do it. It's a success. You cannot fail. Your accent has nothing to do with this. Where you came from, your culture, anything. As long as I loaded, remember what I told you. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Not replenishing your local government. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Like Coca-Cola subdue the earth. And have dominion over the earth. Not over history. I says, yes, sir. I send the information. They went through it. They say, we will do market research to know whether it's okay. They went and did market research. From the day they finished market research, I had no rest. Hey, please. Now, now, now. We have to do it. In fact, we will do everything for you. I said, what? They started running. They started putting everything together. They engaged more than 18, more than 10 engineers to package my invention. For your information, in August 29th this year, the USPTO office approved my provisional filing on my invention. Listen, 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 listen. Wait, 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 wait. That's not the issue. The people continue. They said the market research is so big. This invention is needed all over the world. And listen. The United States of America, I have my code in my file. I have my certificate. Now approved 138 countries 
where my invention can be sold. Now, listen to me. Wait, 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 wait. That's small. You can do better than that yourself. You are not a failure. You are a success. What I'm saying today, start seeing yourself as a success. Don't sit down as a local champion. You can get there. You can do it. You can succeed. You are not a failure. Some of us are so limited in our thinking that your brain is locked up to his thing. You want more than that. The Bible says, be fruitful. Multiply. After you multiply, replenish his thing. Is that what he says? Look at our daddy, Daddy Gio. Daddy Gio don't have a local simple mind. Papa had a broader world mind. Think like that. Plan like that. Pray like that. And become great. You can do it. Somebody say, I can do it. I can do it. Now after our story, the approval came. And the company said, please don't let anybody handle your invention. We will handle it. We have patent lawyer. I do have my own two lawyers. Everything is monitored. As at this time, I'm telling you, all the marketing materials are out. Listen. As at this time, I'm talking to you, the websites are out. Now, this company now are sending this marketing material to the world trade shows in order for them to see a new invention. I just say this so that when you hear the announcement, you will say, but I see that man of God. I touched him. I was in the church with him. A Nigeria who came here like you came. Stand up on your feet. Say, I'm a success. I will reach my goal. Let me announce to you that I'm still preaching the gospel. I am still a pastor. I never left my job. I'm still doing what God called me to do. But God gave me an idea. How much more you? I'm closing with this scripture. Genesis. Genesis is the first and the beginning of the Bible. When you hear the announcement, you will be able to link up to this message. Because the announcement is coming.